Hi, I'm at Wine Connection in Sukhumvit Soy 47. You might ask yourself, what do food, sex, politics, reincarnation and superstition got in common? Well, to find out, you just need to read any of John Burdett's books. Let's talk to John. Hi John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Keith, thanks for being thanks here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. John, tell us, what was your first impression when you set foot in the kingdom? Well, it's hard to describe the way Thailand was 30 years ago. It was such so relaxing after Hong Kong. I was working in Hong mm. Kong. Hong Kong was the most stressful country in the world after Beirut, which was at war. And you come to Thailand and it was relaxed. It was the land of smiles. And it was, um, well, it was an addiction. It was love at first sight. I've been mean, coming back pretty regularly ever since. Yeah. Big difference from Beirut to Bangkok. <laughs> quite, <laughs> quite, quite the contrast. <laughs> Hope so. Yeah. John, what was your uh, inspiration to become a crime fiction novelist? As, as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a writer. I always wanted to write fiction. And crime fiction, well, because um, it's, it's, the po it's the pace of the narrative, I think, with crime fiction, which draws people in. And by the time I was ready to publish a book, I just think seriously about writing a book for publishing, it was thrillers, crime thrillers, police um, thrillers that were selling. That was what publishers were interested in. As a child, did you have a favorite author? Well, when I got into, into um, popular fiction, my, my first love really was Len Dayton. Mm -hmm. He was there, you know, doing the spy stuff long before Le Carre came along. When Le Carre came along, then it was Le Carre. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the favorites were, in, in that sort of genre, was Len, Len Dayton. You know, as, yeah. a, as a sort of a romantic young man, I also loved G.H. Lawrence. But yeah, that's yeah. quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah. But great, great writers, great books. Mm. Yeah. John, what's the process and elements in required of a book to make it to film? Well, I mean, you've got to, you've got to have a strong narrative line. What, a, what a, a script writer is looking for is a spine, because a, a, a film actually is much shorter than a novel. So he wants a spine, and using that spine can take bits of the novel and make a coherent movie mm -hmm. out of it. That's what he's, he's looking for. And if he can't find that, then very often he'll, he'll throw up his hands and say, well, uh, you know, I can make more money doing another book. So it's, if your book is in the least bit complex, then you're going to have trouble getting it made into a movie. All my books have been optioned for movies. People have spent, you know, film companies have spent money um, hiring the option. In the Hollywood system, you've got to have a star, and that star would have to be Eurasian. And there are not that many of those. You'd have to have a director who's at least familiar with uh, Southeast Asia. There are not that many of those. You'd have to have a script writer who has an intuitive understanding of the culture. Otherwise, you get a wooden kind of interpretation of he the He doesn't get all the idios idiosyncrasies of, of no, the just, dynamic of you, the city. No, you just get this sort locations. of, um, you know, almost like a sort of a supermarket mm. version of Thailand, which is, is, wouldn't work very well. It's not yeah. what the yeah. book's about. Yeah. So, you know, people keep trying. I'm grateful. I'm grateful yeah. that I'm selling the options. You know, yeah, I wouldn't mind well, if they actually made a movie sooner or they, later. Um, well, I'm, 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 I hope they do yeah. in the near future. Yeah. Tell us about your uh, latest release, your new book, and what Son Chai has been up to in uh, the Bangkok asset. Yeah, well, from the first book, um, Bangkok 8, people have been saying, well, when's he going to meet his father? Come on, you know. Mm -hmm. I told him, he told us his father was a U.S. vet in Vietnam. When are we going to meet him? What are we going to do about it? So that's been playing on my mind for more than a decade. And finally, I thought I'd, um, I'd go at it and see, see what happens. Bring and it um, it, yeah, w there was no way of going into that without going into Vietnam. And incidentally, I don't think you can live in Southeast Asia without being terribly conscious of Vietnam and, and what happened at that time. So I've gone um, a lot more deeply into that, into Vietnam, into history, mm -hmm. than I have in any of the other books. And it's produced for me a, um, a somewhat different kind of book. Everybody said so. It, it's mm -hmm. different. It's bigger, it's wider, it's deeper. It's maybe, you know, a little bit less witty, a little bit less trying to, for, for laughs and for sensation, much more interested in going more deeply into the whole um, yeah. situation, where life is now in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a little... Uh, trip to Cambodia in there as well. 
Oh, a bit well, of a yes. twist, as, as you're known for. <laughs> uh, well, Cambodia, of course, is, is, is a completely different place. I mean, once you get into Thai yeah. superstition, there's nothing in Thai superstition that doesn't come from Cambodia. Cambodian script, which is very close to Thai script, is considered even today a magical script. All the amulets and so on are written in Cambodian script. Yeah, so it's yeah, considered yeah. the source of magic in Southeast Asia. How do you blend food, sex, crime, superstition, reincarnation, and politics, uh, corruption, in your books? Well, the, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the blending really comes from my very first editor, a wonderful old American gentleman named Sam Vaughan, who's retired now. My first manuscript, he said, well, it's fine, but what does it feel like? What does it smell like? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is the noises? What are, you know, is it hot? Is it cold? You know, is it raining? You know, tell us everything about what's happening within this character. Mm -hmm. And that was fantastic advice, yeah. and I've been following it ever since. And of course, if you, once you base yourself in a Southeast Asia, where the, 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 uh, the sensory stimulation is so much greater than uh, most other places. You've got the food, you've got the heat, you've got the smells, the good yep. and the bad smells, and you know, the whole thing. What is your advice for young writers coming into the market, releasing their publishing, trying to get a publishing deal, their first book? Well, I mean, you really got to have a, a body of work to show. I mean, you've got the first book, that's great. If you self-publish, then um, that's a good start. But don't expect to get anywhere with just one manuscript. These days, publishers, they, re they really want to be confident that they've got some, someone they can run with, you know? Yeah. Because it, it, just one book, one off, it doesn't make a lot of difference to the publisher or to the author. Yeah. It's almost like having a business plan for your, your future, your first book, oh, and this is this will be a series. Or well, that's that's exactly it. I mean, you know, it's not it's not why people become novelists, but the reality is, it's a business. If you want a good publisher, and that publisher is going to invest a lot of money in you, not just what he pays, but what 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 the um, how they sell the book, you know, the advertising and the. Um, everything they pay for on the internet because a lot they of want to see return on their yeah they, they, they have to you know it's it's a business like any other John Burdett thank you so much for pleasure. being on the show pleasure. it's been a pleasure talking to you